good. Well, I've used this message a number of times over the years, but I look back at my records. It's been a year and a half since I used it, but I love the message this year because it's so fitting even of today's happenings. But I've entitled our message, The Worst Thing That Man Ever Asked the Lord. The very worst thing. People ask of the Lord a number of things. Uh, we ask of the Lord when we're in, in a foxhole, don't we, Brother Bobby? Well, the Bible said he made a lot of promises in the foxhole over in North Korea. And, and Lord, if, if you get me out of this place, I'm going to serve you when I get home. Is that what we said? Uh, uh, but, but people ask of the Lord, uh, and you know, it's great that we can ask of him, isn't it? But I've heard of people even ask the Lord to let them win the lottery. <laughs> I don't know, it's almost a curse on people when they do. <laughs> all of a sudden they poor and all of a sudden they got a bunch of money, don't know what to do with it. They make a fool out of themselves. But people have prayed, Lord just let me, or Lord help me do so and so. But we're going to find this was quite different what was asked of the Lord in our text. We're going to go ahead and read the story. Luke chapter 8 verse 26. And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, also called Genesaret, which is over against Galilee. When Jesus went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man. Now Matthew tells us there were two of those which had devils a long time. His man wore no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs, homeless and slept out in the graveyard. And he had devils. Verse 28. And when Jesus, when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thy Son of God, most high God? I beseech thee, torment me not. Well, he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for oftentimes it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he broke the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. Can you imagine demon possessed with all these devils, demons. In verse 31 it said, they besought him, the demons did, they begged or besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And that was there and heard of many swine or hogs feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and there they were choked or drowned. When they that fed them saw what was done, they fled. And they went and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done and they came to Jesus and they found the man out of whom the devils were departed sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothing in his right mind. And they were afraid. They also which saw it told them by what means he that was possessed of the devils was healed. Then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about besought or begged him to depart from them, for they were taken with great fear. So Jesus went up into the ship and returned back again or back to Capernaum where he came from. But if you would look at closely at verse 37 where it says they besought him to depart from they begged him leave. Jesus we don't want you here. Leave. And we're going to get back to that one in a moment.
this is a strange story indeed. Uh, we catch man at its very lowest when he was controlled literally by power he didn't understand. The Bible calls demons and we believe there were fallen angels from heaven and we believe they're very wicked. People that do things today ungodly as they do them a lot of times I believe it's demon possession that causes them to go to the very lowest that one can go. But this man being possessed <coughs> slept out in the cemetery and wore no clothes. Now when I was a kid we had a black cemetery real close to our house. And we'd get out there as boys would having fun. We'd get us a white sheet. People walk by the cemetery going to the grocery store. We'd try to scare them. <laughs> we had a lot of fun at it. But we were just silly boys growing up and learning about life. But here was a guy that slept out in the cemetery. <clears throat> Nothing on. Controlled by powers that he didn't understand. But Jesus met this fellow. A possessed man. Have you ever seen anybody that you thought was filled with demons? Years ago, I had the, and my brother uh, Rudolph back here he, he used to go to prison and witness to those folks and, and try to win them to the Lord over and over again, he went. But I went several years ago, I had a, a relative that was an employee of the wind unit in Huntsville. And they had a lot of mental cases there in that uh, prison system. We went by one place where there was guys in there without any clothes on. In the cell. And the fellow told me, he explained to me what the situation was. said, they can't give these guys any clothes because if they do, they'll stick them in the commode and flush it and flood the prison system. They would walk, and I'm not exaggerating, I'll never forget uh, that experience. Walk it up and down the, just back and forth, over and over and over and over and over. They walked. Possessed of something like this man. But this fellow here meets Jesus. Folks, if you want to meet somebody, that's who we want to meet, isn't it? And it's better to meet them on the right terms rather than the wrong. Uh, but this man had gone so far in sin that the devil's completely controlled his life. And folks, that's sad, isn't it? We're not poking fun at these folks. Uh, it's sad that man can reach that state. But these demons knew Jesus from a past place. If you would look down at your paper, Matthew 25, verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Now, folks, if you didn't pick up that up, God did not prepare hell for mankind. He prepared it for the devil and his angels. Man chooses to go there. God did everything he could to keep him from going there by offering his only begotten son. It's man's choice. 
But these demons knew Jesus. And then if you would, Matthew 8, 29. And behold, I cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thy Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? They know that they're condemned. They know their final destination. And they were questioning Jesus, are you come to torment us before that due time? And then if you would, we read these two verses in the book of Jude, Jude 6 and 7. Only one chapter. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but they left their own habitation, he hath preserved into everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. Set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Both the demons knew, they know well where they're headed. We live in a day of many spirits, the Bible tells us. And he said, to believe not every spirit. But he said, try the spirit, did he not? And how do we try them? But with the word of God. And folk, if uh, the Lord says it's the devil, then we accept the fact, don't we? But the scripture says, in the latter days, many shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The Lord didn't just put that in the Bible to, to fill up his book. He was telling us a statement of what was going to happen. He said many would depart from the faith for whatever reason, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. But here was this man that came and those demons in him cried out to Jesus. And we'd ask the question, was this man past salvation? No. Because the Lord saved him. The Lord cast those demons out. And this man began his Christian life, didn't he? By becoming a follower of Jesus Christ. But Jesus commanded the Spirit to come out of the man. We had a case of a fellow that some years back had visited the church here. And he had a few mental problems. But we were uh, so went and knocking on doors back here. And we... Uh, Rafted him up. And he came and uh, visited in our service a couple of times and got real friendly. And then I got to listening to his speech and his voice. And this man was possessed. He'd been in a mental hospital and hospital. He'd served two terms up there. But he went over to, we wouldn't uh, do what he wanted to to be done. But he goes over to the, you know, where Fairbanks Baptist is right here on the highway. Where the Glen Lowell was a pastor at the time. And the man stood up in the back seat and said, I'm going to go get my shotgun and blow y'all all the way. Now that sounds like a demon, doesn't it? Brother Glenn tried to cast the demons out of him from the pulpit in the back seat and it didn't work. Jesus can do that though, folks. You remember some of the disciples tried to do it and, and the Lord had to step in and said, hey, you can't just do that. 
I got to help you. But Jesus did in fact command the spirit to come out of this man and they came out. When they came out, they went into those hogs. And the hogs ran violently down the banks into the water and they drowned themselves. That was the acts of the demons that were in those hogs. But this happening caused a chain reaction. Those keepers, those fellows that were keeping the hogs, they took off. They fled, the scripture says. And the whole city and countryside came out to see Jesus. Wouldn't it have been wonderful if they'd come for the right purpose or the right cause? Scripture says they came because they were afraid. And when God begins to deal with an individual, he becomes troubled. I had an old fellow tell me years ago that come to know the Lord and he said, when I realized I was lost, I wanted to climb the walls. He was afraid of dying and going to hell. Well, these folk here were afraid. By the way, the Bible tells us that unless the Spirit draws a man, he can't come to God. But it also tells me that Scripture says that he draws all men unto him. That means everyone has that invitation. But these men came out, the whole countryside came out to see Jesus. And they said, Jesus, we want you to leave. Can you imagine asking the one that made you and put you here, hey, get out of our way. We want our hogs. We don't want you. Folk, a lot of people want a hog's life today rather than have the Lord. Doesn't work that way, does it? Some people say when you try to witness to them about the Lord, they say, don't talk to me about that Jesus stuff. That right, Brother Enrique? That's right. Some people would rather have their pride than have salvation. They'll say, I'm just as good as you Christians. They probably are. Because a Christian's not perfect, is he? He's a long way from it. But they said, Jesus, we want you to leave. Can you imagine asking God to get out of their presence? We don't want you here. Well, folks, that's what our generation has decided. Jesus, we don't want you here. Just leave. Now, Jesus granted their request. He doesn't stay where he's not invited. What did I say? He doesn't stay where he's not invited. He went back to the ship. He and his followers and they sailed back to Capernaum. By the way, I've had that privilege of sailing from Capernaum oh, to, to this where this happened. About like Lake Livingston up here, uh, the Sea of Galilee is, fresh water. So Jesus left them there. They kept their hogs, but they lost their soul. Think about that a moment. They kept their hogs, the remaining ones. But they lost 
the most important thing a person could have their soul the tables are going to be turned one of these days and he'll say unto them you asked me to leave now you leave depart from me ye that work iniquity and he'll be cast into the lake of fire I hope you're not saying even as I speak to you this morning God go away I don't have time for God in my life you're going to take time you will take time we know the scripture says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess before God so I'd ask you today if you haven't done it before Jesus I don't want you to leave come on into my heart and trust him while you still have time have a brother and Ricky's going to come and Linda we're going to have an invitation song if you're here this morning and you haven't made peace with the one that loved you and gave himself in your place then you do that today publicly confess Jesus before your fellow man and then follow him in baptism